Hello, my name is Professor Atif Darwish, Professor of OBGYN, Asiat University, Egypt. My lecture is targeted to the OBGYN specialists and consultants, as well as the postgraduate students. A very important topic, which is how to preserve fertility for women uh, with uh, malignancies, whether uh, gynecologic or non-gynecologic malignancies. And this is an updated uh, review of this topic with some videos and uh, I uh, plan to upgrade the lectures every, at least once every year. Thanks to the uh, chemotherapy and radiotherapy, most of the women with malignancies uh, have uh, improved survival rates, particularly those who are young, and this is a good thing. But the bad things that the chemotherapy or radiotherapy may have a deleterious effect on the ovarian function and it, it is associated with decreased ovarian uh, reserve uh, up to ovarian failure in some cases. So you can imagine a patient with a malignancy elsewhere and she is 20 years old and is exposed to chemo or radiotherapy and after completion of the courses uh, or the uh, uh, treatment, uh, now she has no menstruation, she has decreased ovarian reserve and she is very sad and depressed and there are some psychological uh, upsets for those uh, girls or, uh, uh, or young women due to uh, decreased fertility or decreased ovarian function and they have to ask why, why you are doing uh, this line of treatment for us and you know that it may affect our fertility and our future fertility this is not good this is not fair you should be good doctors to treat the malignancy to target the malignancy itself but don't affect our fertility or our future childbirth this is uh, true for females as well as males young males exposed to radio or chemotherapy may have the same questions. So our target when we are dealing with a patient with a malignancy, particularly those who are young, we should classify them into two groups. Either a patient coming to us with a gynecologic malignancy or non-gynecologic malignancy. In gynecologic malignancy, we have to know that if we desire to preserve fertility for this patient, we should know that this malignancy should be early stage and its grade should be reasonable grade, low malignant, uh, uh, low malignant potential, which is grade 1 or maximally grade 2. And this is very important because you cannot make fertility preservation for a patient with a huge ovarian uh, cancer or huge endometrial cancer or cervical cancer extending to the parametrium and so on. This is not a good case for fertility preservation. We plan to preserve fertility for patients with early stages, early stages. So now we have to discuss ovarian tumors. We have benign ovarian tumors, borderline ovarian tumors, or malignant ovarian tumors. Borderline, benign, okay, you can make preservation of the ovarian tissue by uh, excision of the benign, uh, uh, probably benign tumor by ultrasonography, by clinical examination and uh, on spot during exploration. So if you prove to be a benign, you have to uh, make excision of the tumor and preserve the rest of the ovarian tissue and make ovarian refashioning to be able to uh, have ovulation and she can have good uh, pregnancy, natural pregnancy or assisted reproduction later on. And you have to be meticulous and uh, microsurgical when you are doing ovarian refashioning to allow uh, pregnancy, natural pregnancy after the operation. The same applies for borderline malignancy, but in, uh, in borderline malignancies or malignancies there are uh, some conditions which should be fulfilled before taking a decision of ovarian preservation or fertility preservation. The borderline is a malignancy in between benign and malignant 
and it has a, a cellular proliferation, but uh, with nuclear atypia, but without destruction of the stroma. So, the malignant ovarian tumor, when we are confronted with a case of malignant ovarian tumor, and she asks for fertility preservation, please keep my fertility, I am young, I need to have a baby later on. So, we say that if you are stage 1, okay, but stage 1a, which means the tumor is confined to the, uh, the ovary or the fallopian tube, it should be uh, restricted to the uh, in, in inner surface of the ovary, not on the outer surface of the ovary or the fallopian tube, and no malignant cells in acetic or peritoneal washing during peritoneal uh, lavage during the exploration, exploratory staging uh, operation. These are the three criteria to start thinking of fertility preservation for a patient with ovarian cancer. Uh, and the grading should be grade one, which is well differentiated, sometimes grade two, which is moderately differentiated cells. These are the criteria for fertility preservation for a patient with ovarian cancer. So if early ovarian cancer, as mentioned, FIGO 1A grade 1, or borderline, we can make fertility preservation surgery, which means that you may uh, make exploration. You remove the uh, tumor, the uh, ovary, the tube of the affected site with complete peritoneal staging, washing, and uh, omentectomy, random multiple peritoneal uh, biopsies, uh, systemic bilateral pelvic and paraortic lymphadenectomy, and keep the uterus and the contralateral ovary, okay? And after that, you allow the patient to get pregnant, whether uh, uh, natural or by induction ovulation with ovarian uh, or site cryopreservation, or uh, after the, she has to have uh, ovulation and pregnancy, you can make uh, operation again to evaluate the case if there is some residual lesion or uh, resistance of the tumor, you have to make hysterectomy and uh, salpingoferectomy of the uh, preserved site. So, cryo uh, the fertility preservation in such cases is dependent on staging, stage 1A and grade 1, or sometimes grade 2. But uh, grade 2, you have to say to the patient that you may have a good, uh, uh, you may have a chance to propagate to another uh, stage 2 and so on, so it is not safe for you. Some doctors may make ovarian tissue cryopreservation, which is not, actually it is not recommended in ovarian cancer because the ovarian tissue preserve it may harbor a malignant uh, cell and uh, you know the, that ovarian cancer is usually bilateral if it's not evident clinically or by naked eye microscopically may be seen on the other side so if you uh, uh, make uh, ovarian tissue cryopreservation and then reposition of the ovarian tissue in the ovarian fossa or the cubital fossa or wherever this may lead to ovarian cancer again for the same patient after completion of the chemo or radiotherapy. So it's not recommended to make ovarian tissue cryopreservation. Uh, we can do frozen section in the, in, in the operation, but we should know that the accuracy of frozen section intraoperatively is less than 70% in cases. What about cervical cancer? If it is stage zero or stage one, or we can make uh, fertility preservation. Again, stage one should be stage 1A or 1B, and 1A, if the tumor is uh, confined to the cervix, can only be seen by microscope. If it is 1A1, the tumor is more than three millimeter depth and less than seven millimeter width. Stage 1A2, tumor is uh, more than three to five millimeter depth, and not more than seven millimeter width. Regarding stage 1b, it is seen by naked eye or by microscope more than the measurements of the stage 1a. 
so it can be stage 1 B1 if it is less than 4 centimeters stage 1 uh, B2 if it is more than 4 centimeters okay we can make fertility preservation for stage 1 A1 uh, A1 and 1 A2 and for stage 1 B1 but for stage 1 B2 also the ovaries should be uh, put contralaterally uh, during the operation which is craniolateral transposition or, or, or ovarian transposition because this patient usually is subjected to radiotherapy uh, brachytherapy or external radiation so it is better to make craniolateral transpositioning of the ovary intraoperatively so during the operation you should make circulage you should make contralateral transposition of the ovary uh, as a uh, preparatory step for radiotherapy later on and this is the role of uh, circulage I told you which is abdominal circulage what about the endometrium if it is endometrial hyperplasia without atibia we should give the patient progestogen therapy uh, and follow up with hysteroscopy and DNC biopsy three to six months uh, before pregnancy is achieved but if the endometrial biopsy is uh, endometrial hyperplasia with atibia aggressive medroxyprogesterone state therapy or or marina system followed uh, by follow-up hysteroscopy and dnc biopsy for three to nine months before pregnancy is allowed and these are the pictures of the endometrial hyperplasia uh, uh, pulpoidal forms and they are very suspicious uh, and you should when you see these pictures by hysteroscopy you should take biopsy to confirm uh, the diagnosis and to exclude atypia or early malignancy. Early endometrial carcinoma can be offered uh, uh, fertility preservation but should be stage 1A which is confined to the uterus less than 50% myometrial invasion should be grade 1 grade 1 which is well differentiated uh, uh, type of endometrial carcinoma so stage 1A and grade one these are the criteria conditions for allowing the patient or offering the patient fertility preservation in such cases we can remove the tumor itself and leave the corpus and this removal can be done by hysteroscopy by receptoscope we can excise the tumor with a safety uh, area around it and taking biopsy from the endometrium endometrial cartilage of the rest of the endometrium then we can give aggressive progestogen therapy 250 milligram medroxyprogesterone acid injections for 3 to 12 months with follow up in 3 months in intervals and after pregnancy is achieved the patient can be subjected to a hysterectomy, radical hysterectomy operation these uh, outlines can be offered for patient for a patient with progesterone receptor positive uh, endometrial carcinoma figo 1a grade 1 but progesterone receptor negative no we cannot offer this line of treatment because uh, simply because it will not respond to progesterone therapy so there is no rule for fertility preservation if the progesterone receptor is negative in such cases and the hysteroscopy is uh, highlighted in some publications as a safe conservative treatment strategy for a patient with early uh, endometrial carcinoma stage 1a grade 1 as I told you what about non-gynecologic uh, malignancies if we uh, are uh, asked from the oncologist about a patient with leukemia with lymphoma breast cancer or whatever and how to and she is 20 years she is 15 years she is 10 year old and what to do for this patient to preserve the fertility of this patient okay in such cases we have to do either uh, assisted reproductive techniques or we can make ovarian protection of course ovarian protection is offered for patients subjected to radiotherapy to the abdomen lower abdomen or the pelvis but it is not suitable for a patient subjected to chemotherapy in chemotherapy you have to uh, offer the patient assisted reproductive techniques now what are the uh, allowed assisted reproductive techniques for a patient with a malignancy it depends upon the uh, onset of starting chemotherapy for this patient if the patient if you have some time from the oncologist you can 
is you are offered some time to start wait for the menstruation and then you may induce cycle by induction of ovulation HMG or FSH or whatever until follicular uh, growth and egg retrieval after HCG egg retrieval and then cryopreservation of the oocytes this is good and this can be offered for the virgins or uh, married women the you can uh, inject semen or sperms inside these oocytes and you can make cryopreservation of the embryos the results of cryopreservation of the embryos are better than oocyte cryopreservation so if she is married you can uh, subject the oocytes to insemination exe and if she's unmarried you can preserve the oocytes themselves and this takes some time because you have to start to wait for the menstruation and then stimulation for at least 14 days after menstruation and this may uh, jeopardize the status of this patient and she is very anxious and her relatives are very anxious and the oncologist is very anxious because they are uh, afraid of expansion or spread of this malignancy in some cases you can uh, make uh, aspiration of the oocytes from the ovary without waiting for uh, mature oocytes the immature oocytes can be subjected to maturation in vitro which is in vitro maturation from to be changed from germinal vesicles to mature oocytes and these oocytes can be preserved for further fertility but if you don't have time and the oncologist is not accepting to wait this time for induction ovulation or whatever you should go to ovarian tissue preservation by doing laparoscopy and take some part of the ovary or the whole ovary and preserve it by cryopreservation and then transposition of the ovary and a lot of cases got pregnant after ovarian transplantation but you can also offer the ovarian tissue uh, taken from this patient to in vitro maturation and make oocytes and these oocytes can be either uh, fertilized by sperms or preserve it as oocyte cryopreservation so you can go to ovarian tissue retrieval or oocyte retrieval this depends upon the uh, recommendation by the oncologist about the psychological status about the age about different factors that uh, make you to decide whether to start oocyte uh, cryopreservation or ovarian tissue uh, cryopreservation as i told you oocyte cryopreservation like in vitro fertilization or exe cycles induction ovulation followed by egg retrieval some authors uh, don't recommend to wait for the menstruation for induction ovulation to not to lose time you can start ovarian stimulation in patients with cancer randomly uh, in the luteal phase or in the follicular phase not to wait for the menstruation and these are some publications on these protocols ovarian tissue cryopreservation eyes are taken by bunch biopsies by partial excision of the ovary or the whole ovary excised by uh, laparoscopy as i told you now these are the assisted reproductive techniques offered, offered for a patient with non-gynecologic malignancy this means that the genital tract is free of malignancy but what about the ovarian protection the patient is exposed to radiotherapy to the pelvis or the lower abdomen you can make ovarian protection for the radiotherapy or for the chemotherapy as well these are either non-surgical techniques or surgical techniques non-surgical may include GnRH analogs pelvic shielding to protect the pelvis from radiotherapy fractionated dose of chemo or radiotherapy and surgical include transposition of the ovary uh, what about the GnRH uh, uh, analog this is commonly used by the oncologists for all cases and unfortunately uh, they rely that th it is very effective as it suppresses uh, hypothalamus pituitary ovarian axis it prevents early stage of development of ovarian follicles prevents cellular apoptosis and decreases uterine ovarian blood flow so it acts centrally and locally on the ovary but 
The problem of the gene-rich agonist is that there are little studies to support its central uh, role in uh, fertility preservation in modern practice. When you rely on gene-rich agonist, you should start at least one week before initiation of systemic cytotoxic therapy, and you should make prolongation of the therapy of the administration of gene-rich agonist after the administration of the last chemotherapy cycle. It is easy, non-invasive, possible, available, and uh, possibility of preservation of fertility and ovarian function as well. But there is insufficient evidence to confirm its effectiveness uh, in fertility preservation uh, and preservation of the oocytes. It is expensive and has some uh, uh, side effects, as you know. And if you, if you look to this table, it puts the ovarian suppression by GNRH agonist as a controversial uh, line of treatment. The established line of treatments include semen crab preservation, embryo crab preservation, oocyte crab preservation, ovarian tissue transposition for radiotherapy to the pelvis or the lower abdomen. But ovarian suppression is a controversial line of treatment. It is not established. There are other successful lines of treatment like ovarian tissue cryopreservation, uh, in vitro maturation, testicular cryopreservation, but not well established so far. But a very controversial issue is to use gene-rich agonist, is to rely on it because it is okay, it protects ovarian function, but does not uh, protect fertility. It is not sure to protect fertility for the patients or sites. This is very important. It can be given to a young age as, as if, uh, as far as they have hypothalamus tutor ovarian axis, but some recent recommendation can be given to children uh, with, uh, without hypothalamus intact hypothalamus tutor or uh, without mature hypothalamus tutor ovarian axis. Uh, and, but this line is not the first line. The second line, as I told you, for breast cancer, if the patient has hormone insensitive breast cancer, uh, you can give GnRH agonists, ovarian stimulation, cryo preservation, ovarian tissue cryo preservation. But if the uh, hormone sensitive breast cancer, these lines of treatment should be discussed individually. And if there is no time for the oncologist for stimulation of the oocytes, you should go to ovarian tissue cryo preservation uh, to save time. Another line of ovarian protection is the surgical technique, which is transposition of the ovary. And transposition means that you remove the ovary from its normal side to be away from the field of radiotherapy. It usu usually, it is transpositioned craniolaterally to be away from the central uh, uh, part of the pelvis, to be away from the exposure by the radiotherapy. Actually, this technique is underestimated and underused and needs some skill for laparoscopy to perform it. And I encourage all the laparoscopists to contact oncologists to refer those case, cases subjected to radiotherapy uh, to the pelvis or lower abdomen because you can see the following video. It is a simple technique and can be done by uh, level two or three uh, laparoscopic surgeon. You can fix the ovary to the pelvic prim and to superior spine, paracolic gutters, four centimeters away from the radiation field and more than 1.5 centimeters ab above the iliac crest, lateral to the hepatic and splenic flexures of the colon. But it is craniolateral transposition of the ovary in all cases. These are the different techniques of removal of the ovary from its normal side to the pelvic brim to the away from the radiotherapy side, anterior superior spine. Some uh, authors make salpingectomy to facilitate transposition away from the pelvis uh, or the baracolic or spleen, liver. And these are uh, techniques for transposition of the ovaries. Uh, some, uh, some publications make ovarian transposition plus uh, ovarian cryopreservation, take ovarian biopsy at the same time for cryopreservation to be sure that some follicles are preserved for this patient 
if this technique has some complications or the ovarian functions are not store, restored, she has a preserved ovarian uh, tissue. And I think we can see uh, the technique of ovarian transposition. It starts by cutting the ovarian ligament. You know the ovarian ligament is fixed to the uterus and you cut it by uh, any tool, by bowler or a vessel sealing like this instrument which uh, causes coagulation and cutting uh, with less bleeding if it is less than five millimeter uh, depth. So we can uh, cut the ovarian ligament and we can cut part of the meso ovarium to allow the ovary to be mobile. And if you see the ovary here, it, is, it has a follicle which means ovulation, she's a young patient with ovulation of this ovary. Then you make a hole, contralateral a hole in the peritoneum and this hole you can uh, widen it and make a tunnel underneath the peritoneum by a curved instrument which is, can be Maryland forceps, rougie forceps or whatever. This instrument makes a tunnel in this avascular area underneath the peritoneum until you bypass this instrument under the ovarian the meso ovarium medially to grasp the ovary and if the peritoneum is thick uh, you can make incision small incision over the tip of this curved instrument by uh, scissors and you allow this instrument to penetrate the meso ovarium followed by grasping of the ovary by a traumatic instrument and then you catch it and bypass it underneath the peritoneum in the uh, groove or the tunnel made by the curved instrument and then after traction of the ovary it is now transpositioned from its normal site laterally away from the radiation site as guided by the recommendations of the radiologist and now this is the ovary with uh, an intact part which is meso ovarium to supply it to avoid its gangrene and then we make a stitch in the peritoneum more lateral in the uh, anterolateral uh, aspect of the peritoneum to fix this ovary because if you leave it in this position it will be uh, displaced downwards and this suture should be a permanent suture propyl proline suture to uh, avoid uh, uh, displacement of the ovary by itself and then it is fixed to the uh, lateral pelvic core at that time the ovary is fixed and to avoid adhesions of the omentum or the intestine we can make uh, the ovary underneath the peritoneum the whole ovary underneath the peritoneum to uh, uh, guard against adhesion formation and then you can close the peritoneum by uh, some sutures or by it's better by clips because these clips are uh, an, uh, in addition to making the peritoneum adapted uh, to cover the ovary they are very important when you do x-ray post-operative x-ray or uh, CT they can localize the site of the ovary away from the radiation field by this way the ovary is fixed and it is away from the expected uh, site of radiotherapy. Ideally at least three centimeters from the upper border of the radiation field. The disadvantages of ovarian transposition include pelvic pain, ovarian pain, infarction, formation of ovarian cysts is not feasible when the chemotherapy is used. Now, what is the age limit for preservation of the uh, fertility for a patient exposed to uh, non-gynecologic uh, chemo radiotherapy? The age, usually after 40 years old, the fertility uh, potential of the patient decline. So, so we have to tell the patient that your fertility is declining and your chance to have good oocytes 
uh, whether by induction ovulation or the ovarian cryopreservation or so is decreased. But what about the young girls and prepartial girls? The recent recommendation that those girls should be offered cryopreservation because the future, their fertility future is good and as low as one year old you should uh, try ovarian uh, cryopreservation and fertility preservation and some publications now are working on the uh, girls less than one year old so don't hesitate to make ovarian cryopreservation for any girl or any adolescent or any young woman exposed to chemo or radiotherapy to preserve future fertility this is very important this is very important and this issue is uh, a very uh, recent and very hot you should as a gynecologist or uh, uh, oncologist you should put this this issue in mind when you are dealing with a young girl or a young boy uh, to preserve fertility and these uh, lines of uh, prefertility preservation include ovarian tissue cryopreservation or in vitro maturation uh, or uh, oocyte retrieval uh, and then uh, in vitro maturation so ovarian protection for radiotherapy also can be offered for those uh, young girls now we have options we have gene rh agonist to protect the ovary we have ovarian transposition we have assisted reproductive techniques which is first usually the standard cryopreservation strategies strategies should be proposed at uh, initially uh, for the first uh, uh, trial followed by the gene rh agonist as temporary ovarian uh, preservation so gene rh agonist is not the first line of treatment the first line is ovarian uh, tissue is oocyte cryopreservation or ovarian tissue cryopreservation but gene rh agonist is the second line uh, as its role for uh, ovarian uh, uh, oocyte cryopreservation is not clear so gene rh agonist should not be used in place of proving fertility uh, preservation methods it should be second line of treatment uh, but some publications mention that okay if the patient is not a, is not interested in further children she has good number of children she is interested in ovarian separation to preserve ovarian function okay you can use it as a first line but if the patient is interested in fertility preservation it is uh, usually put as a second line or a second option for the treatment so in conclusion fertility preservation for cancer patients should be put in mind in, if you are dealing with any patient with gynecologic or non-gynecologic malignancy or neoplasm, benign, borderline or malignant and to offer this for a gynecologic patient it should be, uh, uh, should be early stage should be early stage and early grade don't forget the boys as semen collection if uh, he is post pubertal or testicular tissue crab reservation which is uh, under investigation if he is young and this is an example of uh, sperm uh, crab reservation from uh, from uh, rhesus and this is called grady which is graft derived and baby born from sperm uh, harvested from the frozen tissue the laparoscopic ovarian transpositioning is a simple, safe, effective technique, uh, uh, and but it is not allowed for. It's not useful for a patient exposed to chemotherapy. It's just for radiotherapy to the pelvis or lower abdomen. General H agonist is a good option for ovarian function preservation, but not fertility uh, preservation. Ovarian tissue cryopreservation is optimal, uh, particularly young prepubertal girls, but it is not. Uh, universally uh, settled. Oocyte cryopreservation is an excellent for unmarried females but needs uh, around two weeks. Uh, embryo cryopreservation for married women, of course, with injection of the oocytes by sperms. As I told you, the oocyte is for single women, ovarian tissue is pre prepared is good. Uh, general H agonist uncertain efficacy and these are the outlines of the pros and cons of all